What's going on, guys? Ryan O'Toole back here again for episode 11 of the End Game series. 11. Thank you. Oh, my God. 11. It's crazy to believe. Jesus. Thank you guys for watching the previous episode, Guardians of the Galaxy, with mm. Durbin from Durbania. And now we are on to the next film in phase two. It's the sequel to the highest and biggest superhero film in 2012, The mm -hmm. Avengers. That is Avengers Age of Ultron. Directed Age again of by Ultron. Age of Ultron. <laughs> directed by Joss Whedon and starring the same Avengers who you all know. The new additions mm -hmm. include James Spader as the voice of Ultron, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch, Aaron Taylor Johnson as Quicksilver, and Paul Bettany as Vision. <laughs> Guys, our special guest, he has already introduced himself. You definitely know who this guy is. He does a lot of movie reviews and bunch, a bunch of stuff. And he is the host of the Next Generation Film Awards with Mothman Jones. And he invited me on to be on as a presenter, and I thank him for that. And he's been on Rotten or Fresh. He has an awesome channel. That is Austin Putnam. Austin, welcome to the Endgame series, man. Oh, you are way too kind, brother. You're being way too kind. Yeah. <laughs> well, all I'm going to say is this. Ryan, once again, thank you for having me on. Thank you for asking me to come on board. And I was like, well, if I do Winter Soldier, I was like, you know, Age of Ultron. I was like, okay, Age of Ultron's okay with me. <laughs> yeah, um, Age of Ultron. <laughs> Uh, but no, and I'm more than happy that you said yes to coming back on to the next gen. I'm more than happy that you could. And I'm and I hope someday I'll come back around or fresh because I'm gonna say my ass off. I've been Romy's been bugging me about that shit as of recently. Yeah. Um but uh no, I'm I'm excited to be talking about Age of Old Trouble. It's not quite my favorite uh MCU film. I'd say it's probably my like my top 10, maybe 15, if I'm being honest with you. But I'm still nonetheless I'm excited to be talking about scene. Who isn't excited for Avengers Endgame? Who wasn't hyped for it? Probably one person, yeah. but yeah. Oh, <laughs> but fuck that one guy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, and now before we talk about this film and go in depth, we want you guys to join us in the comments section below. Mm -hmm. First of all, what do you think of Age of Ultron, guys? Do you love it? Do you think it's eh? Or do you think it's terrible? Let us know and answer these questions along with us. We want to hear your opinions mm -hmm. as well. And I'm very excited to hear Austin's answers to these questions, and I'm ready to give you mine. So let's talk Age of Ultron. Let's do it! <laughs> let's do it! All right, Avengers Age of Ultron 2015 mm -hmm. was a very interesting year. Very crazy ideas oh, the MCU yeah. had with Ant-Man especially, but the sequel for Age of Ultron. First of all, Austin, let's kick it off, man. What was your experience with Age of Ultron? Did you see it open at night, and what was your anticipation? I did, actually, yes. I saw my buddy Lucas yeah. an IMAX 3D, actually, Thursday night, opening yeah, night. Yeah, and me too. We were both hyped as all hell for this thing. I mean, like everyone else was because, I mean, I think it's even rare to even say a person out there doesn't like the original Avengers film because what the original Avengers did was that it pulled off something that we didn't think was possible. And, and if... I mean, Joss Whedon, I mean, now, I mean, when it comes to, I mean, another film that we can't really discuss because it's another universe, um, but he pulled off the nearly impossible, but what the Roots Brothers did with the Vandy War was almost as impossible as the Avengers was. Ultron was in my top three anticipated films of that year with Star Wars and Spectre, even though Spectre wasn't that great, to be honest, if you ask uh, me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I can agree with you. That there, it had so much potential. But anyways, back, back onto Age of Ultron now. The experience I had with Age of Ultron was amazing and back in like years ago if you went to thursday night preview audiences it was the best with those audiences i mean people mm -hmm. were sharing people were laughing at certain scenes like i remember to this day when uh was it was a scene with the battle of sokovia where the avengers were fighting and quicksilver was like get the heck out of here guys it goes back he's like i should have get, out of here. get off your lazy asses <laughs> so I, everyone was laughing their asses off and there's specifically one scene i'll always remember i right i know you i know the one i know you 
I can't speak correctly right now. <laughs> I, know I, never, I know you all know the scene that I'm talking about. Essentially, it's where Vision's born, and Vision picks up Thor's hair. It's like, we gotta go. And everyone <laughs> in the theater was just like, oh, shit! <laughs> everyone was laughing their asses off, too. That sounds like a very fun experience. Oh, right? hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> I had pretty much the same exact experience. I went open a night with my friends in IMAX 3D nice. to Avengers Age of Ultron, the seven o'clock premiere and just like you man mm. fully excited this mm. was my second most anticipated film right behind force awakens nice. obviously <laughs> and this theater was sold out uh, pretty much every Same. mcu screening i go to is sold out the teaser trailer alone mm. is one of my favorite teaser trailers of all time ultron like the music and all that ultron sounded like no, he's gonna be no strings to hold me oh my god no strings on me I like goosebumps yeah. how could that? you not get goosebumps from that trailer no and, seriously i was yeah. just like oh my god this could be the one the best this could be like the empire strikes back right here yes yes and i had the a fun ass time with age of mm. ultron and it Definitely was not better than the first Avengers film, mm -hmm. but the fun experience I had, everybody was uh, just excited as all hell. The Hulkbuster scene, everybody was just oh my clapping, God. Yeah. cheering. So many of that in the film. We'll talk about that scene for sure. But yeah, my experience was absolutely phenomenal. So, mm -hmm. Austin, let's go to the second question, man. Uh, what? Here's an interesting question. What made this film different than the first film? It was definitely the tone, the tonal difference. Because I remember in the very first Avengers, I mean, sure. Uh, the first Avengers, the to me, the main goal, the main goal to me, at least with the first Avengers, was the near impossible goal of bringing all these heroes together without making it seem overstuffed. And not only that, just delivering a kick-ass time of theaters. And I thought the Avengers pulled that off to the T. Where in Age of Ultron, for me, totally wise, it's what I mean, sure. The film does have a lot of the same humor as the first Avengers film for certain, but how it sets up um later films in the MCU, like for example, how it sets up specifically in Fandy War, which I I guarantee we'll get into in a little bit. Um, but no, for me, the most different thing about this one, besides the more characters that brings involved, I would definitely say the character interactions were definitely different than the first film for sure. Um, you could definitely tell that they all get along now and they're, they're just, they just have great banters back and forth. Absolutely. And, they, they, and you could tell in the opening scene, shit, language. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, God no one's saying, good. Watch your language. Watch your language. <laughs> That's not going away anytime soon. They're like, oh my god! All the the, the scenes with the characters just talking, mm. just what makes those two Avengers films so good. Absolutely. And Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon writes excellent scripts. He knows how to make great characters Damn and introducing good great. Damn yeah, the good dialogue. Joss Whedon writes excellent screenplays mm -hmm. and introducing all these new characters too like vision like scarlet witch and quicksilver just joss whedon knows how to build the scenes well by building Absolutely. up the characters and once the action does happen you're invested because the characters mm -hmm. are awesome so i mean that one shot take in the opening scene where it ends with all the avengers well well the five of them at least just unleashing hell on the uh, on the very first opening scene like i remember everyone in my theater was like yeah yeah and everyone was losing their minds as was i because i was like this is incredible right here it was, i mean i like for like the first for like the first action scene i was like oh my god josh Wynn's pulling it off right here oh my god now let's talk about just one thing austin if you mm -hmm. could pick just one thing if you could pick the direction the acting the story what element of age of ultron do you think was better than the first avengers film probably the easiest the answer to go for which i'm not going to do is visual effects because obviously the visual effects were way better than the original avengers film i thought but mm. if i had to really go with it i would say what you brought up the character interactions honestly um the character because, development oh yeah yeah, yeah i mean because really i mean like you just mentioned um and in the original film of course you had to establish them trying to work together as a team for this one, now they're all bonded after what happened in New York, and now you hear 
all the interactions, like one specific thing where my favorite, one of my favorite scenes for the entire film, and I know you're going to love this scene too when I talk about it, was when Hawkeye consults Scarlet Witch about becoming an Avenger. That I remember was like this. May, it's like we're fighting robots in a floating city. I'm using a bow and arrows. Now this makes none of this anything. makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, that's one of my favorite scenes in the entire film. I mean, and to be honest, I thought the Hawkeye was the best character the entire movie too. Um, because I mean, I think I mean Josh Reed. I'm pretty sure that was the that was his way of saying, okay, guys, you were unsatisfied with how Hawkeye was treated in the original film. I'm gonna give him way more screen time, and the whole mind control line was brilliant as well. All right, I'm gonna go with the direction, Josh mm. Whedon's direction. Um, he had a lot more to do with Age of mm -hmm. Ultron, you know, building up more action sequences Absolutely. and building up more characters. And Whedon coming off the first Avengers film was mm. excellent. It was a milestone that seemed impossible to achieve, like bringing all these A-list Marvel yeah. heroes together. And he nailed the first one. And the direction for the second film, I think, is even better. With all the characters he had to establish and the villain and all that and setting up new Absolutely. things. And some parts of the film aren't perfect, but what Whedon did crafting all the characters and giving them their own new backstories yeah, was I agree. absolutely fantastic. And Austin, so you said Hawkeye was your favorite character. Was Hawkeye like the most relatable character? Like, what did you love about Hawkeye in this one? I wouldn't say he was the most relatable, even though I did love his backstory, but it's just that, I mean, he had the best lines, and I don't know what it is, I guess the ability does play a sense because him and Black Widow have no superhuman abilities, like that of the Hulk, or Thor, or Scarlet Witch, or, you know, or even Captain America, but no, especially with the fact that Hawkeye has really has everything to lose i mean i mean sure the hulk does have a lot to lose but when you look at what hawkeye is fighting for specifically he's fighting for his daughter his wife his future which unfortunately i think endgame may have taken away from him but we'll find out uh but no i mean i don't know i just when it comes to hawkeye i mean the fact that we didn't give so much more to him when they have and when the original Avengers film it was essentially just just the soldier of Loki. I don't know. I just when I was re-watching clips of it, I just thought, man, honestly, I mean I love Vision and honestly Thor and Cap are Taz my favorite Avenger if you ask me personally. But just Mine what yeah. uh but just what what we didn't essentially gave Jeremy Renner and Hawkeye to work with I mean, it just, it felt like that to me, Hawkeye was the standout character. And plus, I mean, not just the, the conversation that he had with uh, Scarlet Witch, but when when Quicksilver takes her, he's like, keep up, old man. And all of a is like, no one will ever know. All right, now let's go to the next question. <clears throat> At the time, were you pissed that, the M that Marvel let go Joss Whedon? Do you think he could have had more to tell? Uh, no, uh, I was more pissed about the letting go of Edgar Wright, um, if anything, because because uh, if because when it comes to Ant Man, Edgar Wright was perfect for that film. I mean, then again, Peter Wayne did a phenomenal job with Ant Man, but no, Josh Whedon had a lot to do with his workload. I mean, he had to br he brought in more characters, he had to deal with new tone stuff, he had the pressure of setting up for even more things to come. So really, no, I wasn't really more pissed. I was just like, you know what? I think that Josh Whedon told the story he needed to tell because, because I mean, what the Roost Brothers did with Infinity War and especially with Civil War, I think that they did a great job of taking off where Josh Whedon let off, left off. And I, honestly, I think if Josh Whedon had directed Infinity War, I don't think it would have worked out as well with, than it did with the Roost Brothers because the Russos, really what they did with the Russos is that not only did they do Winter Soldier, but they did Civil War, which was essentially another Avengers film. And But really, I, I feel like that once I saw Civil War, I thought, you know what, the Russos, the Russos, the Russos, the Russos, the Russos, the Yeah, right, synthesizer. Um, when Because when I saw Civil War for the first time, I thought, you know what, these guys are making Infinity War. I have all the confidence I have with them right now. The Russo brothers are my favorite MCU directors. I'm I sure agree. they are for you. Yeah, I yeah, agree. They make stories incredibly well. Like Whedon, I think he suffered from depression, like making this film. Like it's, it's, it's a it's a hard pro it's a hard thing to do. You yeah. know, coming off the first Avengers film and making new thing. 
I can understand why they killed off Quicksilver. He just wasn't that interested of a character. Oh, plus, I agree. I agree. Yeah, plus uh, Fox didn't want Marvel to call them uh, mutants because they called them miracles instead. Because, you know... Really? It, yeah, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, wow. for, yeah. this is the Quicksilver, technically, of X-Men. And so they made a deal yeah, saying, yeah. all right, you can have Quicksilver in Age of Ultron, but you can't call them mutants. You can't call them mutants or we'll sue you. That's stupid. <laughs> so they just call them miracles. Wow. Okay. That, that's just that's stupid. Anyway, um, retarded. What the if, hell? If they killed Hawkeye, I would have been crying. Oh no, same. So, I, so I, so I've been like, <laughs> you gave us one tear me apart, Joss Whedon. And then Whedon's like, you guys didn't care about Hawkeye at all in the first one. Now you do. <laughs> With all this, I want from the event. I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um austin let's talk about our favorite scene what's your favorite scene you could just pick one. Oh god that's mm -hmm. like asking what child is my favorite jesus Christ. oh god <laughs> um i would say one of my favorite scenes in the film i mean i guarantee we'll talk about this because it'll be the final question you've already told me what the final question was um but one of my favorite scenes was actually the conversation the actually the final final conversation between ultron and uh vision where uh ultron is literally he's inches away from freedom he's inches away because one of the rules one of the i think i don't know if iron man or cap to this but get rid of every ultron otherwise we're screwed but um, Ultron had, I know, um, Vision had caught up to Ultron and uh, they were having, they're having a nice whole, dis it was a discussion actually saying uh, the humans, they're done for, like they have no future, like they're, they're all done. And then, and then Vision said, you know what? They may be done, but you underestimate them. And, and then Ultron says, here, I'm barely yeah, I'm naive. naive. <laughs> well, I then, was born yesterday. Yeah, yeah. right. And then Vision. Is, <laughs> uh, so essentially, Vision. I feel like that in that scene, Vision himself knows that the Avengers. I think he even. I don't know if it's just me to think about this. I because I just this just came up to me because I should have thought about this when I rewatched it years ago. But that to me was Vision saying, "You know what? I think the Avengers will die in the future." Uh, I mean, I could be reading way, way deep, way more deeply into it than I should be. But I think even Vision himself said, you know, yeah, humans, yeah, humans are, are they do die. Uh, but at the same time, we do underestimate what humans could do. I would have picked an action scene, Hulkbuster scene. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pick a, <laughs> I'm going to pick a dialogue scene. Okay. Um, the farm scene. That's a everything good, on the farms my you actually <laughs> yeah the, everything on uh hawkeye's farm is my favorite uh dialogue scenes um I can't agree with that i love the introduction to hawkeye's family for sure is <laughs> awesome and when thor steps on the girl's legos and tries to kick <laughs> them away <laughs> um oh, it, it's, it's just great it fleshes out hawkeye's character for sure and then it leads into the scene that 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 was shown at the uh, the Marvel Phase Three announcement thingy, with Cap and Iron Man talking and all that. Earth's mightiest heroes. He's listening to Civil War, like and cotton candy. Yeah, and it is Civil War actually. It does lead into Civil War. Yes, I love that confrontation oh, with Cap yeah. and Iron Man. Tony goes to fix the tractor. Nick Fury shows up out of fucking nowhere. Oh, <laughs> <that's nice. laughs> Like he always does. And yeah, and Nick Fury does show up and all that. And that's cool. And yeah, so that whole farm scene is my favorite dialogue I, scene. I, you know, I can just, and plus, I love the dialogue exchange where Natasha, where Black Widow sees it, where he sees Hawkeye as wife. And it's like, oh, is Natasha doing well? It's like, actually, it's a Daniel. And he goes, like, traitor. Awesome. I think we'll have pretty much the same least favorite scene. Um, you want to know what that scene is, I think? least favorite scene uh hmm well i have one <laughs> uh, i mean uh, there's a couple of scenes that aren't that don't work as well um i would say i i mean i guess when quicksilver's killed off i could i was just like oh really you didn't uh, see that coming <laughs> oh no like, i mean i loved that line but i mean because the, the reason why i was like yeah i mean like yeah like when i saw him down i was like whatever uh but <laughs> 
yeah, I, yeah. I was, I was like, yeah, whatever. Because I didn't really care about. I mean, Quicksilver has some funny as can be lines. And he has some funny moments. But yeah, I mean, the death of Quicksilver didn't. Have, I mean, I remember when I saw the film, there was a collective no. Yeah, I. I, I, I I'm not a fan of recycled humor in films where they take the same yeah. joke over and over, but I like the joke of you didn't see that coming. You oh, no, I, I, that coming. I, I thought that was no, like really because I mean it was a gag that that worked well for certain. Yeah, and the I am Groot as well. We are Groot. Like know, that I, works. So least favorite scene for me, it's the Thor hot tub time machine oh, scene. <laughs> That's brilliant. I, you know, I didn't think of that scene. That's you know, I can agree. I can't disagree with that scene too. Don't over my dream. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! And they they had to put this scene in here to set up Thor Ragnarok. I know yeah. that, but uh, didn't need to be in the film. Oh, no, he, I, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't have to go to what's his name? Stone Scars Guard. What I forgot his name. Um he had to go to him for something yeah. just because he was dreaming about something. And yeah, that, that didn't need to be in the film. That was definitely my least favorite scene. Yeah, <laughs> the I hot mean, tub time machine scene. Uh, I, that's yeah. a real that's brilliant right there. I, I, I commend you for that. Uh no, I mean <laughs> You know what? When you think of that, yeah, I, that that just scene that really didn't need to be in there. I mean, I get setting up for Thorac, which is a badass MCU film. I mean, it's one of my favorites. Um, but really, yeah, Tim, that's a that's a good answer right there. I wish I had thought of that right away. Now, Austin, let's talk about Ultron. Um, I, what is your opinion on him? You, did you find him disappointing or just? Um, yeah. I mean, I. I know I can I can even talk even more about Ultron now. Um, no, I I, I did find him a tad bit disappointing, just a tad bit, because I mean, like I had mentioned, like uh, I mean, there are scenes where like he has a menacing presence for a certain, especially in the opening the, where he is first introduced. I was like, oh shit, like these guys have someone else. Like, how could you be worthy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're all and, terrible puppets. <laughs> yeah, right. And James Bader did a phenomenal job. Like, yes. I mean, really, after hearing him voicing Ultron, I couldn't have picked a better person. Uh, his yeah. voice, his voice fits him so well. It really does. Uh, no, my favorite things. I mean, I I, I do say that his the comedy was too much, but he showed some funny as all lines. He really did. Uh, like, like for example, when, uh, when, um, when Iron Man cap and Thor, they go up to him for the very first time and Scarlet, Witch and Quicksilver are coming with them. It was like, so what do you plan on doing? He's like, Oh, that's girl. Oh, I'll reveal to my whole evil plan. Just, just fight him and all that. I was like, okay, that's brilliant right there. And I do love some of his humor. The humor did work, but I just feel like that they had too much humor. I, I know it's probably a question last week later. <laughs> Clearly, you never made an omelet. He beat me by one I second. One second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ultron for me at the time. Um, I mean, the trailer set him up to be evil and scary, mm -hmm. and he's just Tony Stark, but as a robot bad Easily, guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that was disappointing to me at the time. But you know, I've grown to love and appreciate Ultron. No, more. Yeah, I, I still like he's Ultron. I still do. He's a good villain for sure. But yeah, he way too much humor, way too much sarcastic. Like I like people in the comments. I like that. He, I like that he's funny. I mean, you, there's yeah. nothing wrong with a funny villain. Let I me mean, look at Bit from Back to the Future. Look at him. Like he, he's a funny. He's a he's an asshole, but he's a funny asshole at the same yes, time. Yes. There's nothing uh, wrong with humor in a villain. There's really nothing wrong with that. I mean, look at look at Loki especially. He's one to me. He's in the top three MCU villains. I mean, he has such a sarcastic attitude, but you love the guy. He has such a great personality. You can't hate the guy. When he's talking about vibranium with the Asian doctor girl, the most versatile substance on the planet, and they used it to make a Frisbee. <laughs> yeah, I love that quote That's so much. So it's true. so true. And another one that I absolutely love. So you've come to destroy the Avengers. I've come to save the world. But obviously, yeah. If you think about the villains like Thanos, who is evil, he, he has reasons for why he Absolutely. wants to do what he's doing. Ultron's just a generic bad guy that wants to yeah. destroy the human race and blow yeah. up the entire world. And I mean, yeah. yeah. 
I agree with you 100%. They rushed Ultron's creation completely. I mean, and, I mean don't uh, get me wrong. He has his reasons. He really does have his reasons, but it comes up as a generic bad guy. Now, when you first saw this post credit scene, you must have been jumping up and down. Oh, but yeah. I wanted to I wanted to ask you, why has it taken Thanos this long to actually do something? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. That's a good question right there. Holy shit. Um <laughs> Wasn't it Thanos, getting so long? What I mean, were you doing this? Um, I, 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 what were we, were we just like just doing something? Just doing God knows what we that, that we don't want to know. Um, uh, no, I mean, uh, yeah, why take him so long? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's because he had other lackeys from. I mean, sure, he had. I mean, I mean, something tells me that. I mean, Loki was there. Uh, Loki was there for sure, and you also have the Winter Soldier who was there. To I mean, then again, they're different villains all together. But I guess why it took him song is because I don't know. I guess he, I mean, he had watched to see, especially if um the the aliens could take him out. Nope, the aliens didn't take him out. Let's see if Ultron could take him out. Nope. I guess he's like, oh fuck it, fine. I guess I have to do it myself. Jesus. I don't know. Maybe he was trying to wait for the right moment. It's not. Yeah, right. maybe that's why. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of is because he had a good theory I actually watched today about this. Like he was probably waiting for Odin to die in Ragnarok. That's you a good what? theory. That is a good yeah, theory because yeah. if, you th if you think about it, if Odin was alive, Odin, Odin could have probably destroyed them. Odin is powerful. I would not only that. A, yeah. If imagine this, if Hela was not an antagonist, Hela alone, I feel like could have taken down Thanos. I feel like that she could have even too. Like so, yeah. I mean, if Hela and Odin were around and, and Odin, they're like, dude, look at this guy. You see anyone else that you could possibly be, do? Do you want? All right. Do you want to have your glory? Help us kill him. Then yeah, go after us all you want. Seriously. Where does Avengers: Age of Ultron rank in your MCU ranking? So there's 20 films. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> It um, definitely is a tough question. I would say probably in the top 15 were Captain Marvel ranks for me. Um, I would say probably Captain Marvel for me if I had to spoil that. I'd say Captain Marvel's probably 13 or 12. So probably Age of Ultron's probably like 11. I would say, yeah, I'd say 11 is probably me too. Me. Yeah. me too. Me oh, too. Wow, nice. <laughs> Yeah, virtual. Man, that's my number eleven. Yes. Yeah, I would say I would say number eleven because I mean, yeah, obviously with all the build that they had to do, obviously the execution wasn't all there for it. But I mean, if I mean the Avengers, obviously is in my top ten. I mean, like you can't beat Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's my top five. Let's get to this final question, man. I'm very curious to hear this. How will Avengers: Age of Ultron affect the End Game? Take your point. All right, so obviously the the one scene I talked about where Ultron and, and Vision are, are discussing how basically how humans and also the Avengers would possibly die, but there is one scene I know you're though I know you're thinking about the same one. It's where Tony Stark has his vision. Yep. Um, because I mean, obviously Scarlet Witch, uh, he she was ordered by Ultron to mess with their heads as much as possible, and when Tony got his vision. Uh, you see all the Avengers dead. And I feel like that the snap, I mean, obviously the snap didn't take care of the Avengers and, and, and Fandy or obviously didn't because they're, they're back. Obviously now all of them, that's Spider-Man. Well, we'll see about them. Uh, but no, I just feel like that that snap or not the snap, but the vision that Tony Stark has really does set up for, I mean, I hope it isn't set because I mean, I mean, cause let's be honest here. I think in Endgame, Cap and Iron Man are, are they're, they're toast. I think they're done for an Endgame. But um, I feel like that, though, with everybody else, I'm really curious to see how that one scene affects not really everything in Endgame, but I'm curious to see how the characters from that one scene are affected because clearly you can tell that one scene is a setup for the end game for <laughs> uh, roll credits there. Um, but you can clearly tell that Josh Whedon wrote that scene to say, hey, I think the Avengers are going to kill it off in the future. When I saw that scene in theaters, I'm like, what? Could they die yeah. in the future? You never know. Thanos. Damn. And that alludes back to Iron Man 3 with Tony Stark having PTSD after true, yeah. in the wormhole in the Avengers. So 
There's many possible theories you can think of of how this film can tie into Endgame. Right. And you got to think about the characters who turn to dust in this film. None right. of the main Avengers turn to dust, obviously. Yeah. So you got to look at Scarlet Witch turn to dust. Vision dies. Mm -hmm. um, spoilers. You should have seen these movies, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pretty much all the main Avengers don't turn to dust. Yeah, I was going to say, have you, been, have you been under a rock for the past year or so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So Endgame is going to have a lot of time travel to it. Easily, yes. Yeah. There's a good thing that, um, I don't know if you watch these, but uh, how the Infinity War should have ended. But, no, I haven't seen that, no. Yeah, they brought up a good thing. Like, what if, like, Vision could be resurrected? What if Shuri can make a new Vision in mm. Wakanda? That's interesting to think of, so. Yeah, I just I just thought about that. Yeah, make, make vibranium. It's yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, make, making a Vision that's entirely made of vibranium, that's an... <clears throat> That's it's gonna, theory. Yeah, it's going to come down to the Avengers forming again and bringing yeah. back the team. So I, I have no idea. I just want to see this yeah. film and be surprised about it. Damn, I just thought about that. Wow, that's a good theory. Holy yeah. crap. I just thought about yeah. that. All right. But anyway, guys, that's our answers for these questions for mm -hmm. Avengers Age of Ultron. So in the comment section below, what are your answers to the questions? And what is your theory of how this will tie into the end game? We want to know in the comments below. And that Austin, hurts. Austin, thank you so much, man, oh. for taking part in the end game yeah. series. And before we close off the show, tell my subscribers where they can find you on social media. Well, before I do say, Ryan, again, thank you so much for even inviting me on. So this was a lot of fun discussing Age of Ultra. But no, it's, I mean, even though we both agree it's not our, one, of our, one of our favorite MCU films, it's one of the weaker films for us. But at the same time, it's still fun discussing the MCU with anyone, really. But uh, where can they find me? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Austin P. Putnam. Twitter, same thing. Instagram, same thing. I'm also on Snapchat, uh, Austin Putnam, although I don't even post on there anymore. Uh, but no, yeah, uh, thank you once again, and I'm looking forward to seeing, please do not kill off Rocket Raccoon, please don't kill him off. Guys, thank you for watching Age of Ultron, and look forward to the next episode in the Endgame series, which is Ant-Man, Ants, Ants, Ants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing that with Jack Benner from Jack Benner Movie oh, Reviews, so look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode in the Endgame series. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to me as well as Austin Putnam. His channel link is in the description below. Go check out his stuff. He has awesome content over there. And all my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Peace out, guys.